Hundreds of supporters of the coup in Niger have rallied outside a military base operated by the country's former colonial power, France. Fears are growing for the health of the country's elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. He's been detained since being deposed last month. West African countries have begun preparing for possible military action to reverse the coup. On the outskirts of Niger's capital, protesters are adamant in their support of the coup. Hundreds gathered outside the military base of Niger's former colonizer, France, demanding French soldiers leave the country, warning against the arrival of any ECOWAS forces. The powerful West African bloc has ordered troops on standby as it ramps up pressure on the junta to back down. Its strict sanctions are already taking their toll. Border closures mean trucks have been waiting for weeks to bring in supplies. That's causing food costs in the army to skyrocket. Tomatoes, peppers and carrots come from Nigeria. Only eggplants and pumpkins are grown here. Prices have risen very quickly. Oil, condiments for cooking, even soap for washing or laundry products are now unaffordable. Today I've come to shop, but the prices are no longer affordable. It's really too expensive. We hope that the shopkeepers will adjust their prices. Many are reliant on generators after neighbouring Nigeria cut its power supply. Already one of the poorest nations in the world, the coup and sanctions have made life even harder for many in Niger. Despite their struggles, some are warning against international intervention. We want peace and stability, not war. We don't want ECOWAS here. What does Nigeria know about why the junta staged the coup? They are over there, they aren't here. They don't know why Nigerians stage a coup. As Niger's political stalemate continues, both the coup leaders and ECOWAS are mulling their next moves. West African army chiefs will meet next week to discuss possible military action, while the junta has yet to respond to ECOWAS's latest ultimatum. Let's bring in Nina Villen here. She's the director of the Africa program at the Royal Institute for International Relations. That's a think tank based in Brussels, Belgium. Nina, ECOWAS is preparing a standby force for a possible invasion of Niger. It says all options are on the table. How likely is it that this could escalate into a war? Yeah, it's really difficult to say at this moment um, what option that they will choose to take. Um, we know that the stakes are very high at the moment. Uh, some of the ECOWAS members who are currently suspended precisely because they have gone through a military coup in recent years, Mali and Burkina Faso, they have declared that they will see such a military intervention as a decla declaration of war against their own states and will defend uh, Niger. We also we also know that um, President Basum is held hostage in uh, Niger by uh, the military junta. So there is also a possibility of risking um, the president's life. And then we're also wondering what constitutional order can be reinstated if there is such an intervention. Niger has now seen five coups since independence. How do you account for the country's lack of political stability, Nina? This is, um, as, as, as strange as it uh, seems, this is not really um, something something different in the region. Many of the of the different states have seen more coups than that. Uh, and as you said, Niger has seen five coups since independence. But three of these coups have been seen a bit as corrective coups, like the military is stepping in to... Um, reinstall democratic order because there has been some sort of blockage, some political blockage or some president has tried to stay on longer than than he should. Um, so in that way, the military has been a bit seen like the savior of the population in some instances before. Uh, this case is completely different. Um, but we can also see that the military is deeply involved in politics still. So this civil military imbalance is very much ingrained in the history of Niger, I would say. 
Niger is also regarded as a, a key partner in the fight against Islamist militants in the Sahel region. Fighting there has displaced millions and caused a hunger crisis, as you well know. How much of a blow is the coup in Niger to efforts to defeat this insurgency? Well, it's 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 a blow for sure, um, because all of the attention of the military forces in Niger at the moment, and I would say quite a few of the regional forces, uh, are now centered on what's happening in Niger, the political crisis, rather than uh, fighting the jihadists. So already there, we have a, a considerable blow. The attention is, is diverted to another crisis rather than the jihadists. And we know that jihadist organization, but also also the other non-state armed actors, they're striving from instability and chaos. So for them, this is really uh, a good opportunity to expand um, their presence in the country and in the region at large. Nina, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Nina Velen from the Egmont Royal Institute for International Relations. Thank you. Christoph Schmidt is a member of the German parliament from Chancellor Scholz's Social Democratic Party, where he sits on the Defence Committee. I asked him earlier how the Niger coup is affecting Germany's long-standing ties to the Sahel region. Well, I think um, we, have, we have to differ between uh, the short-term uh, uh, impacts and the long-term impacts, of course. And on the short-term hand, hand, we have... First of all, the safety of our soldiers and our citizens within the region, to keep that in mind. But, uh, of course, with the European Union partnering mission, there can be no partnering mission without a partner. And our partner is the elected government of Niger. And therefore, we have to stop, as we did, the European Union partnering mission. But on the long-term hand, there are some goals we have to achieve. We have to rethink our SAL strategy, I think. And we have to get much more intelligence information with, uh, within the countries we engage in. We, we know that Germany has long had significant strategic interests in Niger. Did this coup really take the German government by complete surprise? Yes, I think we were taken by surprise. This is my impression. We were completely taken by surprise. We always thought Niger is our stability uh, part, our stable partner within the region. And therefore, I, I, I just told you, we have to get much more even intelligence information out of the countries we engage. But all our partner nations were taken by surprise also. So this is not a German problem, I guess. You are a rapporteur for the EU military partnership mission in Niger, which supports peace building uh, efforts and has been working to enhance Niger's army. Uh, you've suggested that the coup has threatened this partnership. If this is the case, what will the consequences be for the region? Well, I'm not too sure about that, actually, because I think, as I said, uh, in order to have a partnering mission, you need to have a partner. And the European Union, Union was invited by the elected government of Niger. And now this government is not in charge anymore. And I, I do not see any, any possibility to work together with the military junta uh, for strengthening their military uh, efforts in order to, to um, fight against terrorism. But this will destabilize the region. And we are in some ways caught in a dilemma, of course. OK, so just to be clear, if the uh, democratically elected leader is not returned to power, then there can be no more cooperation between Germany and Niger? I do not see any, any cooperation uh, on, the, on the military side, on the uh, police side, or even within development assistance with the military junta. Um, okay. Of course, humanitarian aid c can go on in, in some way, but I do not see any form of cooperation within this with this military junta. OK. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the issue of migration. Niger is on the main migration route towards Europe, considering Niger's role in migration control. How might this coup now affect Europe's and Germany's migration policies? Well, once again, we do not know what, what comes next. I think the ECOWAS signal is a very strong signal, but maybe uh, it, it even gets worse. So um, even, this, even if this does not automatically lead to a military intervention, we have to uh, 
uh, admit that there might be some might be a lot of fear within the region and there might be even the national within Niger the migration might start again and the role of Niger within the on the transnational routes is quite clear so there may be a change we do not we do not see any change yet but there might be a change also so we have to rethink about uh, our commitment within the region um, and look for other partners of course all right christoph schmidt member of the german government and the uh, defense committee thank you so much for your time and for speaking to us on dw today